Hello everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lab and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials on YouTube and Facebook. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss out on any of our tutorials. This is a quick overview of some of the changes or differences in Affinity Designer version 2 from version 1. This video is for anyone who is new to version two, coming from version one, and is thrown off by some of the differences in how the interface looks, as well as anyone who is brand new to Affinity Designer and signed up for version two and is referring to videos that were completed in version one. This would include all of our previous YouTube videos, as well as those that are part of our master classes and Basics for Beginners uh, mini course. It is important to understand that Affinity Designer version 2 is not different from Affinity Designer version 1 in terms of the overall layout and functionality. It is simply an enhanced upon version. Version 2 comes with a couple of new tools and any future updates and new features are going to be added to this version. Version 2 is also smoother operating, and that was one of the big changes that was made between version 1 and version 2. So let's go ahead and get started. I am working in the Windows desktop version today. If you are using the Mac, it should more or less look the same. There's a few things that are uh, a little bit different, but it should all be easy enough to follow along. When you first install version 2, even if you have transitioned from version 1, your studio is going to be in the default layout, and that's what you see here. This is not customized for the workflow that I work in and probably not the workflow that you worked in. So if you had previously customized your interface on version 1, you're going to have to do that again on version 2. I recommend that that is the very first step and we'll cover that quickly in just a moment. Let's start by opening up a new document. When you open up the software by default, the document panel will open. In version two, it looks a little bit different than version one. In version one, we had our um, templates icon over here on the side and we had graphics for each of these that was in the center of the screen and then on the sidebar to the right we had these options here for layout color margins bleed and scale so this is laid out just a little bit different again nothing substantially different however um, one thing to note is that over here in our different documents if you had presets in version one, they will import. So that's fantastic that you can have access to those. And your templates will not import, which means you need to go ahead and relink that template folder. You'll do that by clicking on the add folder icon and selecting that folder from your file explorer. Now, this little check mark here that says show on startup if that is checkmarked, every time you open the software, this document panel is going to open. If you don't want this to open on startup, you can simply deselect it and then it will no longer open when you start up. I prefer not to have this pop up personally because sometimes I'm opening a document that I already have, which yes, you can do that here. But if you're following a lot of my videos, then you're used to going to file and open. So you have two options here of how you can go about it. Over in your layout panel, you'll see all of your same options. If you need to adjust your document unit, you can do that here in the drop down. And over in our color, um, if we're using sublimation, we always wanna make sure we're set to that RGB slash eight. Remember that I do cover a lot of this basic page setup stuff in our different tutorials where we're completing actual uh, sublimation products. So you can refer to those for more information or check out the basics for beginners free mini course. This video will be added into that mini course just for clarification for those, again, who are using version two or are new to version two and trying to understand the differences between version two and version one. 
So this is one of the first things you're going to see is just the difference here. We'll go ahead and just select a letter size. Um, it, you may notice that by default it's in landscape. You can simply toggle that back and forth here. I'm going to make sure this has a transparent background. I'm going to get rid of those margins and just click create. Let's put our color profile correct as well. There we go. Okay, so the next difference in our version two interface is the look of the icons over on our tools panel. All of the icons are here. All of the icons are the same symbol and all of the icons are in the same order that they are in version one. Yet despite this, a lot of people are immediately tripped up by the fact that all of these icons are different colors. When you hover over these icons, it tells you what they are, so that makes it a lot easier for you to navigate. Anytime you see one of these white corners, it means that there are additional tools available there. One difference is that the vector brush tool is now underneath the pencil tool. They are nested together. The knife tool is a new tool, which we will be incorporating into some of our videos. And if you are taking um, the master classes, this will be added specific, specific videos on new tools will be added as well as videos for any future updates completely free of charge into that master class. So the knife tool um, is a new function that allows you to slice through vector layers. So it does not work on pixel layers. It works on vector layers. Uh, let's see. Um, and next, okay, we have our shape tools. Um, the shape builder tool is also new. That is underneath our shapes. And again, this is a new feature that allows you to combine different shapes and easily turn them into a unique shape. Once again, something that will be added in depth video in our master classes. So if you are not part of the affinity designer, digital graphic design masterclass for sublimation, you can sign up using the link in the video description and use the code sub that to save $30. That course is super in depth, beginner friendly, covers everything there is to know about using Affinity Designer. It is again, perfect for beginners, includes one-on-one -on -one email support and interactive challenges with opportunities to win prizes. So new features in version two will be added in video form to that so that people can refer to them. And of course, we're very likely to have new tutorials in sub that where we do use some of these new tools from time to time. Uh, the next new tool is underneath our text tool, but our text tool, one slight difference before the A for artistic text tool didn't have a box around it. Now it does small difference, but it's there again. Anytime you see that little white corner, there are additional options underneath. So the next tool that's new is this color picker and style picker. Now color picker tool already existed, but the style picker tool did not. The style picker tool lets you select the style or formatting that you have on text or vector layers, such as the color pattern, special effects, etc., and then apply it to another layer. So again, all new features of version two will have their own dedicated videos in the Affinity Designer Digital Graphic Design Masterclass for those of you who are taking that. And this short overview video is going to go into um, all of our courses at the beginning. So we're just live right now, uh, just letting everyone know for the future. <laughs> this ruler tool is also new, or measure tool, and area tool. So those are both new as well. Um, and then we have our zoom tool and our view tool. They're just grouped together now. A nice little fun feature is that now your color options for your fill and stroke are available over here as well as within the color panel. So that's kind of nice just to make things easier for you. You can choose to customize your tools panel just as you can in version one by coming to view and selecting customize tools. This will allow you to drag and drop, create multiple columns, whatever you would like. Anytime you have a tool selected, the functions of that tool are available in the context toolbar. That has not changed. Everything about our options here remains the same. So nothing to worry about there. Um, and same over in our pixel persona. 
you'll notice that there is nothing specifically new here, but our flood select tool has a new icon. And I believe everything else is still the same. Yes, all of our other tools are the same. There was not any major changes to the pixel persona. So back over in the designer persona or drawing persona, um, the next thing that's a little bit different is our effects panel. Our effects panel is now called quick FX instead of just effects, but you can still access it through the same FX icon on the bottom of the layers panel. You'll also notice that there is now the warp tool function. This only works on vector layers. So text, any shapes that you make, stuff that you make with your vector brush um, or your pen tool. This will not work on pixel layers such as PNGs that you have imported. If you wish to warp pixel layers, you have to do it in Affinity Photo using the mesh warp tool for pixel layers of that software. Again, all of this is covered very in depth in our Affinity Designer Digital Graphic Design Masterclass. The purpose of this video is just to show you the differences between version one and version two to make it easier to follow along with version one videos. You can choose to customize your interface just as you did in version one. So if you find that this layout does not work for you, that's fine. Simply click and drag any of your panels to allow you to have them floating. Or if you're using the Windows version, you can dock your panels on the side. The dock option is not available on Mac version, unfortunately. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Now there's one other pretty substantial change, and that is the location of the studio panel. Prior in version one, you would come to the view panel and you would have your studio option here. This would allow you to easily access other panels um, and be able to find them. Now that has moved to the window panel. You will still come to the view panel for things like margins, guides, rulers, uh, your context toolbar, to your regular toolbar, and your tools. So if you notice that one of your tools is, like your toolbar is missing or your context toolbar is missing, come to view and make sure that those are check marked. Otherwise you're gonna come to window and you are going to find your different panels here. The glyph panel is now underneath the text option as well as the character paragraph and textiles panels, which the glyph browser is the only one that I really use for the most part. Um, so just nice to know that that one is located under here. Once you have customized your studio, you know, moved your panels around, whatever it is that you would like, like I like mine to kind of be over here. Um, sometimes there's a default panel over here. I get rid of that one. If there's any panel you don't want, you can simply uh, get rid of that. So for example, if I don't want styles, I can just X out of it like that. Um, but once you have your preset layout ready, just go to window, studio and add preset. You're going to get this pop up. You can name it and then hit OK. And that way in the future, if you want to come to a certain layout, maybe you have different layouts for different purposes, you will just come to window studio and in my case, select design studio and it's going to automatically set it to that preset that you prefer. Um, these are the biggest things I've seen people get tripped up about. Again, there is not anything substantially different about version two. It is just going to seem different if you have already had some modifications to your studio in place. And also these colorful icons are throwing people off. And as well as the, just the change with the studio panel being under window now, it's such a small thing, but you know, when you really rely on a lot of these things, like making sure you haven't hid your studio and you can see all parts of your studio and finding those missing panels, this is a bit of a big adjustment. So I would say that's probably the only thing that's really that big of a deal um, because it threw me off as well. At first, I was, was immediately panicked that all the stuff that was under view was no longer there anymore. But rest assured, it's still there. 
All of the functions and features of version one continue to be the same in version two. The way that you use all of the tools in version one continues to be the same in version two. Version two simply has a smoother back end, a smoother function on your device. And again, a little bit more color over here, a few additional tools. That's it. So I hope that this video helps you go ahead and move forward with some of our tutorials. It should be easy enough for you to follow any version one tutorial, keeping in mind these small changes that have been made to version two. Once again, if you are brand new to Affinity Designer, check out our free basic for beginners mini course. I will add this video into there for reference. That gives you a quick highlight reel as well as links to some of our different YouTube videos uh, that are relevant for learning different parts of the software. And if you are interested in learning absolutely everything there is to know about Affinity Designer and having access to in-depth videos that will cover all of the new tools now and the ones that are going to be released in the future, be sure to sign up for the Affinity Designer Digital Graphic Design Masterclass for Sublimation. Link is in the video description. Use the code sub that to save $30. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great rest of your day.